Okay, here we go. We're into the double bonded function groups now, and we're going to start with the first two families that contain a double bonded function group. That would be the aldehydes and the ketones. And there's the function group shown there. It's known as carbonyl group. So carbon with a YL. And so that's how you know it's an attachment or a branch. Uh, just before I get started, there are just a couple of uses of these uh, different types of molecules or compounds. Uh, aldehydes used to be used in the manufacture of this plastic known as Bakelite. And Bakelite was actually formaldehyde, which is this particular molecule. And that is known as methanol. And phenyl, which is actually, as you might guess, a benzene ring with an OH attached. It's an alcohol on a benzene ring, OH group. And so Bakelite is actually a polymer, long chain uh, macromolecule, but it would make this plastic, this brown stuff. And this brown stuff was very common uh, as early as I think the 1930s into the 50s and early 60s as the go-to plastic for a lot of different uh, electronic structures, electronic things like this old television. That is an old television. On the other side, we have ketones. So ketones, um, like this one, this is known as acetone. It's a ketone. Um, and acetone is very soluble in water. And with a really low boiling point, it evaporates quite easily. And so it dissolves a lot of organic compounds. It's soluble in water and has a low evaporating or low um, boiling point, so it evaporates easily. So acetone, very commonly used as a solvent. And so as a solvent, like nail polish remover, it will dissolve off that nail polish, which is an organic compound, and then evaporate. So it's very useful in that regard. All right, so let's get on to this carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group is characterized by the C double bond O. And for aldehydes, specifically, it's a slightly different formulation. It has this attached hydrogen. So this attached hydrogen is very important. That indicates that it's an aldehyde. So this means it has to be a terminal group. The, the carbonyl group is terminal. It has to be on a terminal carbon. Therefore, it has that H attached. The R, then, as you probably already realize, can be any sort of carbon chain. It could also be an H, and that would be the simplest aldehyde methanol, but it can also be carbon chains. The naming is very straightforward. We take off the E of our alkane root name, and we add the suffix al. So here's an example. One, two, three, four carbons. Notice the function group is terminal, so that identifies it as an aldehyde. And this would be called butanal. And notice I do not have the indicate position of that branch because it's always going to be carbon one. Here's another one. So there's my functional group, my aldehyde group, and that's carbon one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentanal, and on carbon three, I have this methyl group. So it's going to be three methyl pentanal. Notice I do not need a number because it's always carbon one for an aldehyde. So that's aldehydes. Ketones, not much different, um, except the the functional group, that C double bond O, is on what I term an interior cover. It has to be interior, which means you have to have two R groups attached. These must contain carbon. So the first uh, example of a ketone wouldn't be until you have three carbons. Three carbons, that would be um, propanone. And the naming for the ketones is just as simple. You take off the E and you add the suffix own, O-N-E. O -N -E. So let's have a look at this one. And again, here you do have to position the, the uh, carbonyl group in the chain. This chain is going to be one, two, three, four, five carbons long. I have my ketone on carbon two, and I have a methyl group on carbon four. So this is going to be four methyl pentan two own. So again, the two own indicates the carbonyl group on carbon 2, because 4 methyl pentan 3 ohm would be an isomer. So that's why I have to indicate position of that um, 
that carbonyl group, the C double bundle. Let's have a look at this one. So here I have an attached alkyl halide. I have a ketone. And so I'm going to number this way to minimize the branch. I haven't changed the position of the carbonyl branch. So this becomes 1-chloropropanone. And again, I don't need to indicate position of the carbonyl group because propanone, it has to be carbon-2. If it was carbon-1 or carbon-3, for example, it would be an aldehyde if it was on a terminal carbon. Because it's in the middle, it's a ketone, and propanone, there's only one possible position for that carbonyl group. All right, so let's have a little bit more practice here. So again, here's my one, two, three, four. So that's butanal. I think we already had that one. Anyways, four carbons, aldehyde, terminal group. Three ethyl hexantuone. Well, all in names. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my hexan. Double bond O. There's my hexantuone. Three ethyl. There's my three ethyl. And then I would maximize the bonding to carbon with hydrogens. Notice the group with the key carbonyl group cannot take any more hydrogens. Now, you can also see where the problems might lie if you, if you know the naming system. 2 methyl pentan 5 one 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pentan 5 one so Let's here put our 2 methyl there and our pentan 5 one and hopefully you've already seen the problem. The problem is that a ketone is not a terminal functional group, whereas here we have a terminal functional group. So this is actually an aldehyde. And so the correct name for this molecule is, in fact, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 methyl pentanal because it's an aldehyde. So that's correct. That is not correct. 3-ethyl pentan 3-al. Okay, so again, same thing. 3-ethyl pentan 3-al. So this would be a pentan 3-al with their carbonyl group, but that's already a ketone. And the other problem is 3-ethyl. Well, if you look, we have one, two, three, four bonds already to this carbon. You cannot have a branch on the same carbon as you have a carbonyl group because that carbonyl group is full or sorry the, the bonding to the carbon is complete so you cannot have any more branches so that name is just absolutely incorrect so you can't even draw that one finally carbonyl group and polarity so a carbonyl group is polar not surprising the C double bond O is a polar bond delta EN is about 0.8 and so aldehydes and ketones will have a bond dipole and hence a molecular dipole, so they're polar, polar molecules. Aldehydes and ketones will have a higher boiling point than the same molecular mass or roughly the same molecular mass alkanes because they're polar, so that polarity is going to make the force of attraction between molecules stronger. That said, the boiling point is going to be lower than an alcohol, and the reason for that is um, the type of intermolecular force. So because this is a polar bond, there's the polarity for both. You have polarity, but that type of intermolecular force between molecules is known as the dipole-dipole force. We're going to talk about these later, but dipole-dipole force is not as strong as what's seen in alcohols, which I already mentioned. Here's the polarity in the alcohol. That's known as hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole force as a force of attraction between molecules. So the aldehydes of similar, aldehydes and ketones of similar molecular mass and alcohol have a slightly lower boiling point. And so that's your introduction to double bonding functional groups, specifically the carbonyl group. Uh, and it comprise, it, it's found on the two families we've talked about in this video, the aldehydes and the ketones. And that concludes this video.